Hey everyone, we are back with a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. I had, what, nine or ten days off to wrap up June and uh, into early July, the 4th of July weekend. Uh, featured some really nice weather. We really lucked out with the holiday weekend this year. It turned a little bit more humid by yesterday afternoon and evening, but really the dew points did not really rise appreciably until today. And boy, once they started climbing up, it was a much different feeling day out there today as you know, as recently as first thing this morning, 4 or 5 a.m., the dew point was still in the middle and upper 50s, but then a big jump around mid-morning as those gusty thunderstorms pushed in, and dew points have been in the upper 60s to around 70 ever since. It is really a Florida-like air mass out there for today. Let's talk about uh, some of the numbers for today, the fifth day of July at the Youngstown Warren Airport. 0.97 is what we registered at the airport. I'm going to show you some other uh, rain gauge totals here momentarily, but Pretty healthy drink of water out there this morning, and you know, this was the best news of all. No severe weather with this morning's storms, even though they were pretty loud, and in some places there was some ponding on area roadways and things like that, but no severe weather really, and about an inch or so worth of rain in a lot of spots, kind of just what we needed after a pretty dry month of June. Pretty typical temperature-wise today, 83 on the high side and 65 on the low side. This morning, it will be even warmer first thing tomorrow morning. Other rain gauges across the area up on the roof here at WFMJ, 1.1 inches worth of rain. Around Boardman and Canfield, an inch to an inch and a quarter was pretty common. Amounts a little bit lower once you got south of 224, down towards Hanoverton, uh, the, the uh, Guilford Lake area out towards New Garden, and places like that. It was closer to a quarter of an inch or so down there. But in southeastern Columbiana County, we did a little bit better with three quarters of an inch or so. One inch amounts uh, pretty common along the I-80 corridor from Newton Falls across uh, into the uh, Hubbard area, Sharon, and then heading down towards Grove City, Slippery Rock, and uh, Newcastle and Elwood City as well. All right, since I was out last week, I did uh, want to quickly review the first half of the year, January through June. Uh, Precipitation-wise, we had our ups and downs, but for the first half of 2022, we actually had a little bit of a surplus. Officially at the airport, 1.08 inches above the average. But that being said, of course, June was pretty dry. At the airport, 1.13 inches in a deficit for the month of June. Temperature-wise, of course, ups and downs, including a pretty harsh outbreak of uh, Arctic air at the end of January. Compared to the average, the warmest day of the first half of the year was this day in late February, where uh, temperatures were about uh, 25 degrees warmer than the average. But it all came out in the washes, a little bit above average. Nothing really remarkable about temperatures through the first half of 2022. What is interesting is, even though we ended up with about at about a half a degree warmer than average, it was actually the coolest first half of a year since 2015. It's been uh, seven years since we've had a January through June period that was uh, as cool, quote-unquote, as this year. We haven't had a cooler than average first half of the year, of course, in several years now, but this was the uh, coolest one since 2015. All right, keeping an eye on the radar out there this evening. Uh, a few severe thunderstorm watches from Chicago back towards Des Moines, back towards Omaha into southern Minnesota. Uh, a couple of stragglers out ahead of that uh, those watch boxes in parts of Indiana, Michigan, and far western Ohio. But uh, this is a mean-looking complex of storms out here. This was a uh, kind of a uh, not real well modeled complex of storms uh, today in parts of the Dakotas. Uh, the the models did not advertise this very well, and it will continue to kind of ride a little bit of an instability gradient coming south and east as we head through the evening and into the overnight. These kinds of complexes that sometimes become MCSs, mesoscale convective systems, or even derechos if they're alive for long enough, they like to ride along an instability gradient, kind of the border between pretty stable air and the heart of the most unstable air. They like to kind of ride that gradient, and the train tracks will be there overnight tonight for these to kind of do one of these numbers for the most part. Now, that being said, could we get grazed by a, a shower or a storm here overnight? Yes, I'm going to show you some modeling in a second, but the main track of uh, clusters overnight and even into Wednesday will be closer to Indianapolis, closer to Cincinnati, Louisville, and then eventually down into the Carolinas. So this is the tonight severe weather outlook. And then for tomorrow, slight risk, level 2 on that 1 to 5 scale. Cincinnati down towards Charleston and down into uh, parts of uh, the Virginias and Carolinas as well. The severe weather risk around here for tomorrow is pretty much negligible at this point. Now, as we head through the night tonight, 
The atmosphere will try to destabilize a little bit once again. Uh, I don't think we're going to see much, but around midnight or so, could there be kind of a loosely organized cluster or two of showers and storms? I think that's possible. You see that on our high-res modeling, and while well, this is just one run of one model, other models are, are hinting at this idea as well. Now, one thing we'll keep an eye on as we go through the night is model trends with regards to first thing tomorrow morning. The most recent run of our high-res model here does bring a pretty good-looking cluster through around daybreak. Not ready to buy this idea just yet. I do buy the idea that there could be something loosely organized around midnight, 1 or 2. Closer to daybreak, even 7 or 8 tomorrow morning, uh, you know, confidence on this idea being right is not very high. Could there be a shower? I think there's an outside chance, but uh, anything heavy and gusty, I think uh, it's a real, real small possibility at this point. Now, this cold front, it's not much of a cold front, but it, this boundary is going to kind of lay out over the next 48 hours, kind of roughly dividing Ohio in half on Wednesday. In northern Ohio, we're kind of on the northern side of this front. The air is a little more stable. Central and southern Ohio, the atmosphere becomes quite a bit more unstable, and so their chances of more clusters of storms will be much higher in places like Parkersburg, Marietta, Cincinnati, Cincinnati, I should say, down towards Charleston as well. And uh, so the farther north you are in Ohio and in Pennsylvania, the lower your rain chances will be on Wednesday. That being said, could we have a, a quick shower first thing in the morning and again midday or mid-afternoon, I should say? I think that's possible, but I would not at this point cancel outdoor plans. If you've got a tea time tomorrow, especially in the afternoon, don't cancel that uh, tea time, but uh, just be aware that there's a low-end possibility of a renegade stray shower or storm. Same idea Thursday. Our, our model here doesn't show much. But this front's still in the vicinity, and could there be a shower or a storm? I can't rule that out, even though most of the day will be rain-free once again. Maybe somewhat higher chances of wet weather on Friday as a more well-defined front, a uh, stronger cold front, will push through. This is the front that will usher in the much more comfortable air in time for the upcoming weekend. It could also trigger a shower or storm or two on Friday. So the dew points are going to stay elevated until that front passes us on Friday. At least through midday Friday, dew points will still be pretty elevated. By Friday evening, the air mass should be drying out. And boy, do we have a nice weekend ahead. Uh, kind of like we just had uh, over Fourth of the 4th uh, of July holiday weekend with dew points way down for midsummer. Temperatures very nice, upper 70s, lower 80s, and lots of sunshine for Saturday and for Sunday. All right, we're uh, five days deep into the month of July, but again, I was off last week. So let's talk about some of the longer range ideas here. Here's a look at the Climate Prediction Center. Outlook for the month of July. The only places that are that cooler than average temperatures are favored for July as a whole along the West Coast, Pacific Northwest specifically. Um, the middle of the country should feature some pretty intense heat compared to the average even uh, during July. And around here, it probably comes out in the wash as somewhat above average. I don't think uh, odds favor a cooler than average July, but uh, will it be tremendously above the average temperature wise? That doesn't seem very likely at this point. Some good news here precipitation-wise. Now, you don't see green on the map here locally, but after a pretty month, uh, a dry month of June, I should say, July is unlikely to be as dry as June. Doesn't look like it's a super wet month, no, but as dry compared to average as June, that doesn't seem very likely at this point either. So, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to slip, you know, full bore into a, uh, a harsh drought around here. That being said... I don't see many rain chances coming our way over the next five or six days. Real spotty stuff again Wednesday, Thursday, and even into Friday. But then we're dry Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Maybe we get a few more chances of wet weather by the middle of next week. Thanks for watching this Tuesday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope you and yours had a good holiday weekend and a good start to this week. I'll see you right back here on Wednesday for a full forecast update.